Hey, this is Amanda Hammett, and this is the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. All right, in today's episode, I have Jordan Donovan from Valvoline, and she's going to break some major millennial molds right up front because she has been at Valvoline since the day she graduated from college, 13 years ago. So I want you to listen in and find out how Jordan learned to step up and make herself known instead of just waiting and hoping that her hard work was going to get her the recognition that she deserves. Join us in the episode. Hey there, this is Amanda Hammett, the Millennial Translator. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Today, we actually have someone also from Valvoline. This is Jordan Donovan. Jordan, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks for letting me call in. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for coming in. Um, so tell us a little bit about you, Jordan. Um, well, I've been working for Valvoline for about 13 years in a variety of roles. Um, I'm a Lexington, Kentucky native, so um, I've pretty much been here since high school and college just a uh, short 20 minutes away. Oh, um, nice. Yes, I'm a mom to a five-year-old little girl and three-year-old little boy. Oh, fun, 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 <laughs> fun. So, all right, now I, I know that you've done a variety of things since you've been at Valvoline. Tell us about that um, very first role transitioning out of high or I'm sorry out of college and the classroom into the real world so to speak what was that like what was that first role and what was that, what was that like for you um well when I left college um I came over to Babylon and started working in customer service okay. and um my father had also worked for the company so I kind of got my foot in the door to get some jobs and um some just some good experience working in customer service, learning how to deal with conflict management and um, problem solving. So it was, it was very good experience. I worked for there about a year and then was able to be promoted into some um, additional roles. That's really, really cool. I, I love that you did the customer service route because I think that <laughs> a lot of times people come in and they're like, oh, I don't want to do customer service. That's like not cool or not whatever. But I, I really think that customer service gives you a good broad view of the company in general, but also dealing with the general public because at the end of the day, you got to do it. You know, you've got to do right. it. <laughs> so that's really, really, really cool. So um, now you've been again with Valvoline for quite a while. Um, the national average or millennials are often you know, <laughs> made fun of for job hopping. Um, 13 years is not exactly what I would consider job hopping though. Uh, so you, you <laughs> You've been there a little while. So, uh -huh. um, you, you know, have you had any stumbling blocks so far in your career in those 13 years? Well, um, if you kind of look at my resume, most of the jobs I was in for about three years before um, I moved on. Um, some of those, I definitely think, um, maybe the skill sets that I was able to use for future roles. But I think some of, the, of my mentality for the first few years was my my work will be my track record and they'll see that and promote me. But the last probably couple of years, um, as I've developed some mentor relationships, um, they've kind of been teaching me, you got to own your career. You got to get out there, put your foot in the door and try to, um, you know, get, get ahead above everyone. So having mentors, I think has definitely helped me with some of the assembly blocks that I faced in prior years, just because um, I have champions now here bringing my name to the table and some discussions and, um, giving me project work or working with my current supervisors to just um, showcase some of my skills. So that's probably helped me in the last few years where in past, I probably was like, I'll just work really hard and they'll promote me eventually. Um, that didn't always work, I think. So. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I'm glad. I mean, I'm sorry that you had to go through that experience of, <laughs> of not figuring that out, but I'm so glad that you did figure out this, you know, getting a mentor. I think Mentorship is one of the things that I advocate most for. I, I think that it's incredibly important on both sides of the table, whether you're the mentor or the mentee. But tell me, Jordan, how did you, how did you get this first mentor? How, tell me how that came about. Um, so my boss in a former role, she kind of moved into a different role. And we started a mentor program here. So we kind of kicked off a pilot program. And they matched kind of people up with skill sets. So one of the things I wanted to work on was command skills. just being able to present in front of an audience and have confidence. And there was only one person that also checked that as a strength. So we got paired up and um, just through conversations, you know, they kind of helped um, 
provide a little bit of feedback on, on opportunities I could work on for my command skills. It's, it's always a work in progress for me, um, but I definitely think they've helped strengthen that skill set. So. Now that is, that's amazing. I, I really, I love that you knew this about yourself and that you did something about it to, to further that skill, regardless of the fear, because I know that the thought <laughs> of presenting in, in front of, in front of people is scary to most people. I mean, I, I do it a lot, so it's different for me, but most people, it, it's, it's a major fear. And so I, I'm glad that you attacked it head on. That's really cool. And I think that that's really good for your career as well. Have you, noticed a difference in um, now in your growing comfort level with giving presentations and in front of people have you noticed a difference in I don't really know the right word I'm trying to use here but have you noticed a difference in how you feel like you're perceived by other people especially the people above you yes and um, I think just kind of owning my work and presenting it to where probably in past years, I'm like, I'll do this presentation, I'll do this analysis, and I'll hand it off. I've been trying to take those opportunities to say, can I go present that? Can I have that experience? Um, and I probably stumbled through several of them, but I think, as I said, I'm getting better and more confident with each one. So continuing to like volunteer for those opportunities when they arise. And there is no substitute for that FaceTime, you know, because a lot of times when people above you, when they're thinking about a presentation, even if it was a group effort, they tend to remember the person that actually presented it. Whether they did none of the work or all of the work, that's the person that they most associate. It's that, it's that facial recognition and they have put that face with that group. So mm -hmm. good for you for stepping up and, and for going forward with that. Now, have you had any other relationships with mentors or is just this one or? Um, so like I said, this year I kind of, I sat with my mentor and I was like, I kind of want to branch across. I thought maybe I'd like some marketing or some digital experience in my next five to 10 year career plan. So um, about a year ago, I added an additional mentor in the marketing department. So she's director over one of our brands. Um, so we meet quarterly. Um, we've been busy. There's been a lot of change going on this year. So we've yes. always met as regular. And then um, I added in a VP as well. So we were going to meet quarterly um, twice a year. You know, we were going to try to meet occasionally. He ended up leaving the company. So I'm kind of searching for that again. But just getting their feedback, how they have kind of navigated their career paths, some stumbling blocks they may have had to watch out and just yeah. um, taking their feedback on, you know, things they may have learned from that I can, that I can use to my advantage. So, Absolutely. I, I think that that is... I, I think that you're doing it. That's fantastic. The, the feedback that you're willing to take and, and they just putting yourself out there in new and different roles. That's, that's serious growth. And that's where a lot of things start. So um, I, I feel like women in particular tend to be a little more, Oh, I'm going to let my work speak for itself. And although you might be the best person at this particular job, sometimes it's the person that puts them, puts themselves out there. That is right. the one that gets the promotion or the one that gets the recognition. So mm -hmm. good for you. Good for you for doing that. I, I love <laughs> it. Um, so now, da, 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 da. is there anything that we've talked about the mentors? Is there anything that a particular boss in the past and in, in your various roles, or maybe even a coworker has, has done that really keeps you engaged or, or keeps you like really wanting to get out there and, and do good work for Valvoline? Um, I've been fortunate that I've had great leaders in, in most of my roles and, um, you know, as I've kind of made efficiencies and processes and had additional bandwidth, I can reach out to them to say, you know, I really like to cross train on a different product line or pick up some project work. So they've always been open to that. Um, our company is great. They do tuition reimbursement. So, you know, I had worked here about a year and I decided I'd like to go back to school and they paid for my MBA. So, I mean, they're amazing about, you know, putting those opportunities. And then most jobs, there's been certifications or skill sets that we can do. So, you know, I did my, when I worked in pricing, I became a certified pricing manager. When I was in supply chain, I worked on my APIC certification. Mm -hmm. And then right now we've been having um, some negotiations looking for opportunities to certify some product line management. So they're always willing, I feel like, to go the extra mile to train us to be more proficient in our jobs. So. That's really cool. Now, um, besides the additional training and, and continuing education and the tuition reimbursement, I mean, that's fantastic. <laughs> is there anything else that you can think of that Valvoline offers uh, as far as like benefits or perks that has just been, that makes you feel like, hey, they, they see me as a human, they want me to do my best? 
Is there anything? Um, else? Well, like I said, if you look at if you look at Myers, I've been here 13 years. They typically promote within when possible, so I feel like that's kind of a leg up over external mm -hmm. candidates. Um, the tuition reimbursement, we're we're heavily involved in the community. We do the Habitat builds every year. The the Big Brothers Big Sisters, mm -hmm. uh, they offer the SOAR program. So I did a shortened version of the SOAR um, women's leadership training, and then through our um, women's networking program here, we've. Um, I've been able to attend several um, conferences for like women leading Kentucky and, and so forth. So just to network with women outside the organization. So just trading stories and successes. Mm -hmm. So that's been good too. Oh, actually that's, that's how I came into Valvoline was through your women's group. So uh -huh. it's, a, it's a great little group. Not little, yes. it's actually, it's not little <laughs> at all, <laughs> but it, it's wonderful. You guys do a lot of really fantastic things at Valvoline as far as just building company loyal loyalty to the company with it with the employees and things like that i i noticed that when i was walking around mm -hmm. that you could just see a sense of people were happy to be there mm -hmm. that's not always and our new building is fabulous so it's very modern and high tech so i think everyone's loving that too <laughs> mm -hmm. it is it's it is quite beautiful it's quite mm -hmm. beautiful actually so um now is there anything that I mean, obviously you, you've been there a little while, but is there anything as an older millennial that we <laughs> earlier, is there anything that you wish that the younger millennials or even up and coming Gen Z, is there anything that you wish that they knew as they were matriculating into the workforce? Um, I think just take opportunities, volunteer for things. When you come in, just have an open mind and a, a good positive attitude. I think that's gotten me pretty far. I think people, I'm easy to work with. I think... Um, people can approach me for questions, and if I don't know the answer, I can try to help them or navigate them to someone who might. And like I said, probably three of my five roles here have been new, brand new to Valvoline. So, you know, no script was written, but I was willing to kind of walk in and develop that. So um, it was a learning together with my manager, but just being open to that. Uh, you know, I, and this is totally kind of plays into that, but do you, did failure and just kind of trying to figure things out as, as you went along. I mean, because if it was completely new there and there was no script, there probably were some things that didn't work out so well. Right. Right. So and I guess I kind of developed that playbook by trial and elimination. So there's definitely things I learned from to avoid. And, um, you know, you made it, you make mistakes as you're learning. They were new um, jobs. So I think yeah. people were a little bit more open-minded, but uh, it has, um, like I said, develop me and strengthen me for future roles, just having that, that learning curve, I guess. I, I love it. I love it. I love when you're in and you have an opportunity to actually fail. And sometimes that's the most freeing thing because you're like, all right, well, that didn't work. So let's just get up and brush ourselves off and keep going. So yes. <laughs> gotta do it. that's fantastic. Well, um, is there anything that you wish that companies did that made the hiring process a little bit better, but let me actually change that up a little bit. The hiring process as, as you guys are bringing in new people, how it affects you. Is there anything that you wish that Valvoline, for instance, knew about that, how that affects you? As a um, yes. Um, I think for us, like just in the, in some of the interview process, some of ours can be formal, they're, you know, more panel interviews. So I think sometimes we've been steering those away um, and pointing them more towards like looking at their skill set, looking at their like work experience or their past experiences, if they're an internal candidate and just trying to leverage that more than just like how they might interview or how they may look on a resume, you know, how they work in real life situations. So, right. And you guys do so much internal like promotion, which is just phenomenal. Um, I love it. So, mm -hmm. okay. very cool. And for millennials, I think we have so many coming in. I laugh. I used to be like the young one here, and I'm like, now I've been replaced by this whole new generation coming in. Um, but I feel like they, I mean, they have so much insight and new ideas, and they're just like a fresh breath to some, you know, a lot of us have been here several years. So I think they can offer some unique perspective. And I also laugh because I feel like so many of them that have these like awesome internships they've had and this higher education. I mean, they come with so much to the table from the beginning. So I, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> later today, I am have, I have a meeting. There is a university here in Atlanta that is doing a study on 
women entrepreneurs and they reached out to me, you know, wanting me to be one of their study subjects. And I was like, oh, uh-huh. um, and I was expecting this was like a graduate study. Um, no, this is like a first semester freshman student. <laughs> I was like, right. okay. Well, we'll like I'll look at some res- of resumes of who we've you know interviewed and I'm like, they have amazing um, experiences already. So <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it is amazing some of the things that they're doing before they even get into the workforce. So it's just, mm-hmm. you know, what, what can they do once they get there? So Right. Yes. Well, wonderful. Well, Jordan, I really appreciate all of your insights. I, I love that you have had all this wonderful longevity at Valvoline. <laughs> Um, very much breaking a, a stereotypical <laughs> millennial mold there. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And thank you for sharing with our audience about, about all of your experience and the ups and downs and the not so fun parts of growing in your career. I love it. Um, is it okay if our audience reaches out to you on LinkedIn? Yes, I would love that. Okay, perfect. Well, I will put a link to your LinkedIn account um, in the show notes, but otherwise, Jordan, it has been my pleasure. Thank Thank you you so much. (laughs) Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. If you are looking for even more information on millennials and some free resources, visit my website at amandahammett.com. The link is below. It's amandahammett.com. There you can download a free millennial employee engagement guide that will give you all kinds of tips and tricks on how to keep those millennials engaged on a day-to-day basis. Because we all know that millennials who are happy at work are more productive at work.